This is Dave Alcock of EK, formerly of Alpha Quarter. We've had Dave here how many times yeah, before? I think this is my third or fourth. Yes, think, yeah. many times yeah. uh, before the, the bug. But uh, yes, mm -hmm. so we're, we're returning to normal. And the idea that returning to normal means Dave is... Anyway, let's just jump straight in. EK Quantum Surface, which is radiators, new radiators. We've been waiting a long time for these. I did an unboxing for of these rads. This crossflow radiator arrived in the past couple of days, which is why Dave's turned up now to talk us through the range. In my unboxing video, which I know you watched, yes, because I've got in some key words that earned your good boy points at your uh, employers, was it fundamentally okay? Did I miss much? Pretty much as always, spot on, Leo. You know why? You know why it's God like, love you. You've done this before, swine, yeah. you know. See, I'll, I'll, I'll get my reviews one way or another, even if it's been a charming. Lovely. Um, <laughs> Love Thank you very much, Dave. You're very kind. But uh, the thing is, the obviously with the surface radiators, as you mentioned, they're a new series, basically like a new start as well for the radiators, and that's what we're trying to convey to people as well. Whereas the old ones are a bit mismatched. These yes, ones are all, one, yeah. one of the uh, when I was doing my prep for that, and I started looking at the specs about fin density and such like, and then Joe Roby, who let's face it is now design god at EK, yeah, yeah. Um, came back with a note basically saying oh, we've had loads of different specs over the time. So your EK cool stream. Yeah, it's a, that's a cool stream 240. However, there are many cool stream 240s. Uh, if we take this 240, move these to the side, put it in against a regular quantum surface 240. What are the big changes from the old cool stream that's been around for blooming years to the new quantum surface? Well, the main thing is, as you mentioned, the old cool stream had loads of iterations, loads of changes that weren't sung and danced about it was just there was there's a change it's improved it's, it's now that whereas this is a fresh start so all these are all essentially the same products just different sizes so we know exactly the spec on this it's not got any revisions not got any changes so we know this one is as it is you know we can send out the spec sheet we can send out everything for this radiator not a problem with the cool stream well, there's a there's a number of changes over the years, and it's in I think it's seven years old or something like that, maybe a bit longer. I, I was going to say and heading it's, towards ten, if yeah, anything. Yeah. It's an awfully long time. And um, yeah, so basically these ones have had loads of iterations, and it's hard to then design products from that when customers have got different iterations, have bought it at different times, and. Where's this one? Clean slate. And so we can this design is, products this around the, it. This is the founder's edition. Yeah, if you like. This, yeah. this is the Eddie Koenig edition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, graphics card joke already. Um, right, so in terms of, for me, one of the big changes is one of the most least obvious is the change to metric threads. Yeah, yeah. Which is just, thank you so much. Uh, I know from Joe's point of view, Matrix 7. Yes. Yeah, so. so let's have the Matrix 7. So, right, so Matrix 7, I'm, I'm, luckily we've got 30 mil. One of the questions yeah, yeah. below the unboxing was, why why not 28? We go up in increments of 7, but why not start? In, in a sense, the, the reference plane, it doesn't almost matter how thick the rad is, no. it's the reference plane. Yeah, exactly. But it still seems a bit peculiar. Taking <laughs> 2 mil off a radiator actually does affect performance quite a bit because right. you have to change the whole design structure of the radiator. Okay. So... Even though it's only two mil, when you think of it as compared to thirty mil compared to twenty eight, it's quite a big percentage, and it does make a difference. Okay. So it's um, we, when we looked into it, we thought about seven, isn't it? About yeah. seven percent. Okay, yeah, okay. So, yeah. That's why yeah. seven C does fit no, into seven. the scheme. <laughs> <laughs> the two um, mil seven percent. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's why basically it's it's, a, it's just to stop performance loss. With it being such a small radiator, they can only perform up to. A thin radiator, I should say, not small. They can only perform up to a certain standard, which is for this one really well. But we want to try and make it as thick as possible while still being compatible with Matrix Seven. Personal preference: You've been modding for I don't know Ooh. how many blooming years. Twelve years. <laughs> as a as a personal preference, one twenties or one forty as a unit. One twenty all the time. You for see. Me. Right. And it makes no sense because no. 140s work so much better. Area, yeah. A 280 or a 360, 280 does as yep. well as a 360. Yep, exactly, yeah. And yet, so many cases, these are chunky 120s, yep. as we know. Yep. You put that into a rad, uh, into a case where you've got minimal clearance and you, you, you're, you're scraping the edges sometimes. Uh, but a 280, if you've got space for a 360, a 280, you're probably good to go. Yeah. <laughs> for me, it's all about the aesthetics. For, for, yes. So, and quite often, 
120 mil radiators will go central, yeah. and on quite a few cases, the 140 ones are slightly offset. Yeah. And that's why I go because so what so it'll like at the top, so it doesn't yeah. hit the motherboard, for instance, or you know whatever the reason. Okay. And that's why. So I I've always have 120s. It means I only have to stock 120 mil fans as well. Yeah. Which I, I, I knew you were going to say that, and yet I still think you're wrong. Yeah. However, <laughs> um, this is the Crossflow. So, so is. this is the P240XX for Crossflow. P because of the thickness, as okay. we can see. And this is, as Joe described it, the new Goldilocks. This is the, if you can put the thicker rad in, it's going to cover all your requirements. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, So we've got the S for the small one. The P for performance, and then we've got the big boy, the extreme, which is X, and that's the naming scheme. So it's quite an easy naming scheme. It's which thickness it is, S, P, or X, followed by the size of it 240, 360, or whatever. And then if it's got an M on the end, it means it's a multi port like this one. With the P, which is like Joe says, like the Goldilocks, if you can get these and you don't want to stretch for the extreme, you know. Mm. Um, then this is the one to go for. It's really I mean, nice. I mean, let's face it, if you put that at the front of a case and if you're tempted to go fans in push-pull, exactly, you're taking, 50 up, mil. Yeah, you're taking up a colossal amount of your case, particularly with chunky graphics card. Yeah, yeah. Um, the ports, does it matter which ports you use for your ins and your outs or is it totally... So on the crossflow, as long as you have one at each end, you, you know, you, you're kind of good to go. So like, the, like this, it's kind of... Um, Configuration is perfectly fine, but you could also have it on one of the end, one of the end, you know, it's however you want it really, as long as it's crossflow. And the multi port on this is possible because of the thickness, you couldn't have these ports on the end yeah, exactly, on that yeah. rad there because yeah, so, space. Yeah, for the slimline ones, you just can't have multi ports, unfortunately. The, the ports on a radiator are far bigger than the actual look on, from the outside, so they have to have space on the inside to go into and, you know. Well, on that, sure. you can't. I was talking, wasn't I, about cutting on these over? <laughs> I haven't brought myself to do it. I actually fit, seriously considered bringing a cutter in here and just going. And I thought, no, it's cover everything in metal dust. You're was... lucky. I I was just about to buy another saw to do one, and I haven't got around to doing it yet. So I nearly did it. And what my plan is, and I'll, if I do one, I'll send you one down. Oh, well, thank you. My plan is to cut it in half, set it in resin, so that you can see how it is from the end. But it's a yeah, because as soon as you cut the channels off, it'll just go... Yeah, 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 quite, quite. So, so we're, we're, we're in the same realms here when people say things like doing laptop testing and airflow through cases. Can you use smoke? It's like, well, sure, but then I have residue everywhere in yeah. here. Plus, you have to let the place clear out for an hour before you can then get yeah. on with stuff. In this exactly. case, in practice, I'd love to section this. Yeah. In principle, big mess. Maybe, bits we'll, uh, maybe we'll take it to a water cutters and just get them jet through it. That might be interesting. Yeah. See what we can do about that. I like that. I like that idea. Yeah, that would be because that would be the cleanest cut for the for it. Yes, and I'll be less covered in you know swarf and, and bits of metal. Ooh. Materials, uh, copper mainly. Yep. Copper entirely. How much brass is? It? Wh so which bits of brass? It's just the end channels, and so it's right. main channels are all all copper. Yeah. Then at the ends, you've just got brass, and then on obviously we've got the case as well, which is aluminium um, end plates and I believe steel for the sides. To get the it explains just, the weight of yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's one of the worst things when putting it on a scale, it'd be fairly lame actually. But uh, the heft of that and the heft of that, it's uh, jeez. Oh, the unboxing video, which did you just looking at it? Yeah, has it, it had just, 35k views? I didn't look at the numbers, I didn't look at the numbers. <laughs> 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 no, what are you talking about? <laughs> on, I mean, we can have it sooner Anywho, really. um, many, many members, 35k people. Uh, are interested in unboxing EK radiators. Yeah, you cool. see this, this That's is, why I'm here. Thank you very much. Um, questions raised by them. Number one, colours. Yeah. So as you can see, with what we've got here, we've got the white yes. with silver end caps. Yes. And we've got the black with the silver end caps. Some people have been commenting saying that they don't like the silver end caps. We are doing black on black. So and some others, I think, I think at least one comment referred to the shiny bosses. Yeah, and the shiny, but they'll stay shiny, I imagine, because getting another skew. Like the problem with having three different color radiators is then you have three yeah. skews of the inserts, and once you've got a fitting in them, they're almost invisible. Also, with 
a lot of these radiators, particularly the ones with the multi ports, yep. the fittings on them with Matrix 7 and the compatible products we're having with them, we're going to have special fittings that go onto them and you're going to be able to directly just push them into the distro plate like I, we showed you on I the... I discussed that with Joe on the... Uh, um, on the torsion yeah, I was going to say, yes, it wasn't the... Uh, Computex, it was the oh, yeah, the um, yeah, the extra, yeah, yeah, the, the, those, yes, the, okay, fine. That's colors, so more colors to come. When you say black on black, of course, that's the, the cool stream, yeah, that's all <laughs> ah, right. So, what you're saying is, <laughs> yeah, black black black. Gonna do black on black, so it's going to be black radiator with the black end <laughs> plates. But another thing with these is for the modders out there, which there should be far more of, go on, get, get doing some modding, you can take these radiators completely apart. So you can take the case off them, you can spray them, you know, it's obviously orange. voids warranty. But yeah, Spray if, them orange now. Yeah, so if you them. take these end caps off, spray them orange, or, or, orange, orange, spray them orange, spray them orange, you've got a white and orange radiator, which I reckon that'd look quite tasty. Yeah, so, have you done that already? No, I haven't, I haven't got these radiators yet, so... Yes, get in there. So, so that's colours... Availability, which again, the, the, because the first batch was kind of stealth launch because yeah. you had so many pre orders. So, yeah, so the first batch went like we had to launch and then ship out to people because mm. pre orders went a bit crazy. So, the, the availability now is most of them are in stock, or the, the majority of them are in stock. The black on black, we're hoping to get out this year, certainly. <laughs> I would say September, October, but we'll. Put a soon TM on it, and they say hopefully this. Will that year. be before or after Nvidia four thousand? Wow, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, when when they release theirs, we release ours potentially. <laughs> Let's go that route. But yeah, that's the um, that's the availability. Certainly on the black on black, we ha we, we want everything else in stock and have that supply route sorted out before we then try and get more of a different color in. Okay, because it just well makes sense, doesn't it? Really, don't uh... connections at the top for a front mounted radiator or connections at the bottom. Connections at the top for a front round. Well, luckily, in a custom loop system, yes. you've got a reservoir as well, so it doesn't really make any odds. because they. In terms of the gurgle and the noise, <laughs> yeah. as well, yeah. as, 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 that, yeah. for me, that's always been the biggest thing. Yeah, so but, once uh, you've got a reservoir, um, as long as you um, bleed the system and get everything out of it and get the air around to the reservoir, it stays in the reservoir. So and top of the top of the fluid in the res above the highest block, which is going to be the CPU block um, every time, isn't it? You don't necessarily need to do that on a custom loop, really. No, but you don't necessarily. But you should do. But yes. you don't necessarily have to because as long as you fill the reservoir and get the air out, it means the components above will be okay filled filled anyway. So provided the pump is wet, yeah. You, you can get away with murder. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. yeah okay, right, Whereas, because okay. on it, the thing, the problem we've got, which I'm sure you're referring to AIOs <laughs> being... Of know, course, yes, yeah, yes, yes. Um, yeah. There's no place for the air to sort of congregate. It's only got the highest point. Okay. Whereas on a reservoir, it will congregate in the reservoir as long as the water's there to be moved around. Okay, so. this is all well and good. We're going to do a practical example with the Lian Li Lancool 3 that Sounds I reviewed good. a couple of weeks ago. So we have here the Lian Li Lancool 3 I reviewed quite recently. I like it a lot. I gave it a 9 out of 10 and it made Kit Guru's top 5 must-have cases. It's a big case. The thing for me in terms of cooling that's slightly vexing is it comes with three 140s at the front. It supports up to a 360, i.e. units of 120. That doesn't work so well in my opinion. So I'm going to chuck it over to Dave and say, Dave, what are we going to do with cooling in this case? Well, if we had every single one of our radiators that you know we had on uh, on Askews, I'd have said 360 at the front, 360 at the top, and you can cool anything you want. Yep. The more radiator space you've got, obviously the cooler things get. But equally, if you're only doing a CPU like we can now, the more radiators you've got, the quieter it can be because you can basically run your fans as very very low so the the thing is that, that people seem to forget is once you get past a certain amount of fans it's basically does not that much mm. but you can reduce the fans so say you've got six fans at 80 percent you could have 12 at 40 you know and that's kind of how you and then it goes down to silence there was a comment below the video <laughs> I, re I reviewed this with a bunch of fans uh, the, the noctua fans on the cooler i used went up to 1500 rpm from memory i think the case fans do 1200 something like that and I went down to 1,000 and 800, and by ear, the, the audio level here is about 35 decibels. Um, it's quiet, but it's not silent. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell the difference between 1,000 and 800. It was just happy. Comment below the video. 
could you try 600, 400 and 200 RPM? It's like, <laughs> there's quiet <laughs> and then you're just maintaining yeah. the quiet. It's quiet. Question is, it's still quiet. <laughs> it's still quiet. Whereas if you can whack in 250 watts of GPU and maintain the quiet, now that's a game changer. Yeah. That, that's a big deal. And that's the that's what essentially more radiators does. Yeah. As soon as that power goes in, the fans might ramp up a bit. Certainly if you've got, like, say, two 360s, the fans will ramp up a little bit, yeah. but it'll ramp up far less than if you yeah. just had a single 120 or single 240 or whatever. Yes. And that's the that's where the quietness comes from, from water cooling. But because we don't have the 360 cross flow, we do have a 240 cross flow. Yep. And the, the reason I want to use this is to show the utilisation of why we've done a cross flow radiator. With a standard radiator, you'd have both ports on the end in like a U-shaped configuration. Mm -hmm. And it would mean if I put that up here, we'd have to have both tubes coming out from one essentially, end or the essentially other. Essentially, your choice is both at the front or both at the back, yeah, isn't exactly, it? Yeah. So if they're both at the back, they're close to the CPU block, but you've got to get away from the CPU block. If they're both at the front, you've got to get from the CPU block to the front of the case, which exactly, is yeah. the standard conundrum. Right. With a cross flow, however, we can use one at each end, yep. and it means you could have one tube at the front yep. going into a reservoir, from the reservoir into the CPU, from the CPU straight back up into the radiator. And it makes a loop, yep. which is as simple as you can get. We've got a magnitude CPU block for the AM4, which I haven't used for a little while. And I'm feeling it's... I've got, got some minor, minor corrosion points inside it. So that's entirely on me. It's not brand new. It's in good <laughs> nick, but it's not perfect. Uh, pump res, right, options for pumps and reservoirs. So, what I did think at first was throwing an FLT, which is this little, let's take it out of the bag. Yeah, it. Hey, Sorry. It. I was trying to hide the blemishes from your not cleaning the coolant out to Leo. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so we have got the FLT 120, which you could throw at the back and then go from there to the CPU, to the radiator, right. to the pump. But you'd have to have a standalone pump and it just makes it a little bit different. However, we have got these on the website with the pump attached. Right. So the, for the modders out there... That's well, a kinetic version. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, that, for the modders out there, what I'd do then is put it on the back and cut away a little bit <laughs> so the <laughs> pump came out. And then you've got a pump res at the back, straight to there, to the radiator, yeah, okay. and it's all up high. And that's a nice way of doing it. I'm and there's also the combined, when I did that call with uh, Attila and Joe... Um, for the expo, the CPU block yeah. that has the combined um, pump, pump res reservoir, the whole CPU, yeah. shooting match in one unit. Um, is that in going to be an AM4 as well? We, I believe, it's going to be a new AMD socket only. So if it's M5, yeah, well, and then, it should be backwards. Yeah, back, if yeah, it okay, is, right, which right. it should be, but obviously we don't know. So I mean, if we take the magnitude, I mean, it's going to be. Yay tall or something, isn't it? Yeah, it's it about must the, be. It's about the same size as the velocity with a fitting on the top. Okay. So that's in terms of height, that's how big the ports are on the side. And then that means all you then need is radiator connections. Yeah, you're done. You've yep. got the entire system in one. And that's exactly why I know on the video you did of the surface radiator, somebody yep. asked for a radiator with a pump yep. attachment, and that's exactly why we're not yep. doing it. You, yep. With that product, you just don't need yep. to. So instead FLT, of using that in yep. the separate one, we can just use a standard D5 resin yep. pump, which is and, just been bolted on. And uh, apart from the fact this is an old school one, so it's got the incorrect cable, so yeah, rather okay. than the new shiny, lovely SATA powered yeah. sleeved versions. More but... power delivery and more legs anyway, aren't there? <laughs> <laughs> it's a horrible connector though. It's absolutely <laughs> bad. Leaning around the side of the Land Cool 3, it's a big case. Dave has kindly installed the crossflow rad in the roof, a pair of EK Varda RGB fans that I had on the on the shelf, and the pump res unit, so it's ready for action, along with some black ZMT tubing and some quantum fittings. Yeah, the torque fittings. So I'll fill the loop, do a bit of thermal testing and just see how it compares, but let's face it, a 240 rad with a D5 pump cooling a 12 core processor it it's not fun. much of a battle really it comes down to how quiet it is yeah that's it and obviously you can make it quieter with an additional radiator if you actually find a graphics card and put that in that, yeah you, yeah there will, be a there will be a graphics <laughs> card going in i just yeah. left it out to show off the ek no, no, hardware that'll be in the next bit after you've gone yeah. 
<laughs> but this this is actually a landmark. This is since the the, the the virus. This has been the first face to face thing with a person discussing products. Is it? Yes, it absolutely oh. is. So, well, so I, they're, and I appreciate you inviting yeah. me down, and that's uh, that's that changes everything. Change your tune. Thank you yeah, very much. Yes, if yes, I'd have known that, I wouldn't have brought a baseball bat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. That's it. We're done with this part of the video. Dave's off. I'm going to get on with the thermal testing. I have indeed installed a graphics card, my Sapphire Radeon RX 6200 XT, and I've chosen this EK Cryofuel Solid Azure Blue Coolant. We've got the first reservoir full, so let's turn on the system and let's pump it around. I didn't use the EK leak tester, my logic being the system was actually put together by EK, so how could it possibly go wrong? So far so good. Now I've seen the Lian Li Lan Cool 3 in action with some RGB on the go, it makes me all the more sad that in my review of this case I had the non-RGB version. My recommendation if you're into this case is to make sure you get the RGB version because I think it looks much better with a bit of lighting going on. When I did my original Lancool review, I set the fans at a number of different speeds. Let's remind ourselves what it sounded like with the Noctua cooler installed and the fans running at first at 1000 RPM. And then at 1500 RPM. And to contrast, this setup here, so we've got the four case fans of course, and we've now got two EK120 fans on the radiator rather than the large Noctua fans on the air cooler in the middle of the chassis. What does this setup sound like? 1000 RPM. And then at 1500 RPM. And on to the cooling. When I did the review of the Lang Cool, the temperatures are horrible here in the UK, about 28 degrees. They're still quite warm, uh, 24 or so today. Looking at the temperature chart for our Ryzen 9 5900X from the original review, you can see five different fan speeds and an ambient to 28 degrees. Those obviously are measured figures ranging from 73 down to 67. This is with the PC simultaneously running Cinebench R23 and Time Spy stress test. Because the temperature today is cooler by four degrees or so, we're gonna convert those temperatures to deltas. And then we're gonna put a couple of gaps in where our new figures are gonna go. So first up, we have the EK setup running with the fans at 1000 RPM, perfectly reasonable temperature slots in very nicely. Ramping the fans up to 1500 RPM, that matches the air-cooled setup with the fans flat out. Slightly surprising result to me, I thought it'd be a few degrees cooler, but perfectly acceptable. Switching over to the graphics side of things, so it's the same deal. Our Sapphire RX 6800 XT, first we have the figures from the original review, as measured at 28 Celsius. Then we convert them to deltas, add in a couple of gaps, and with the EK setup and the fans running at 1000 RPM, immediately the graphics card is at the cooler end of the scale. Ramping up the fan speed to 1500 RPM, we take off a significant amount of temperature. This is actually rather impressive to me. If you take the air cooler out of the middle of the case, it means that the back of the graphics card is now open to the airflow. This rear fan is helping to cool the graphics card. It's perfectly logical, it just wasn't quite what I expected. I thought the CPU would drop a few degrees and the graphics card would be static, maybe save a degree. Thankfully, we have seen some benefit from our work and it was well worth having Dave Alcock visitors from EK. Yep, beer time. <laughs> so cheers, Dave. And that's it for this video. We're done.